And that Omnium is a tough, <laughs> tough event because it tests everything that a track cyclist must have. Endurance, tactics, speed, stamina, everything. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think more for me, it's, it's my head that's the problem. Like, like you, could, you could have a bad event and then you have to pick yourself back up and go straight into another event. Like, Which is what happened with you in the last two events, really. It was, yeah. Well, the IP didn't exactly go to plan. I thought I was going to win and I didn't. And then so that meant that Sarah Hammer was one point ahead of me to start with. And then obviously I didn't beat her in the scratch race when I thought I was going to. So yeah, I had to get three points back in one event. <laughs> Did, do you have to pinch yourself when I've just said that you joined Dean Kelly Holmes and Becky Arlington? Yeah. And you've made <laughs> History. You're only 20 years of age. <laughs> I can't believe it. I actually can't. Mm. And in your honour, uh, they painted a gold post box in the wrong place. Yes, they <laughs> did. And where did they put it? In Harlow. In Harlow in Essex. Have yeah. you ever lived in Harlow? No, but I was born in Harlow, to be fair. But oh, OK, but they've given you another one now. They have, yeah, in my hometown. So now you're the only British Olympian to have two gold post yeah. boxes. <laughs> Laura, I think your story, for those people who don't know, is, is an amazing one, because you were born prematurely with a collapsed lung, and yeah. you were encouraged, your parents were encouraged to, to effectively get you into exercise. Yeah. And you tried several sports yeah. before you got into cycling what happened in the trampolining by the way um well i just kept passing out like mid-air so obviously <laughs> pretty dangerous <laughs> so they told me that i had to quit and well for six months and then obviously i was never going to get back into it after six months so i just stuck with cycling instead. and you still i mean you still pay a price for that exercise yeah. because you since we'll trump it delicately since we're still some people still eating their yeah. breakfast <laughs> but, but it you know it, it, it you get an upset stomach yeah yeah it makes me sick so yeah nice. yeah i was sick after the individual pursuit yesterday but i'm so used to it now that it just doesn't even bother me like it's almost like oh it's gonna come and then next thing i'm all right again yeah. but it's a true indication of what you know the power of sport can be yeah yeah, yeah. Your sister is a professional rider, yeah. and I think that you owe her something very special. Didn't you promise her that you would buy her a car? Oh, yeah, if, <laughs> if I did the double. So what's, what's she want? Well, she's got a budget. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no Ferraris, I'm telling you. Right, OK. As long as we got that clear, definitely. Well, okay. we, people are beginning to focus now on, on the effect that these games could have on everybody. And, and there's a wonderful email, uh, Chris, uh, aimed at your direction from Emily, Emily Cook this morning saying we've just witnessed the true inspiration of the Team GB straight from Sir Chris Hoy's latest goal to our little girl who's three. Uh, we've had a balance bike for a year that's not been wanted so one of those things that yes. you learn no yeah. paddles you learn yeah. cyclone. Elfie witnessed Chris Hoy's fantastic victory and suddenly asked for her bike. 20 minutes later she'd learned to whiz around the house unaided and pretended to do race starts. We even had a medal ceremony on a stool with an old medal and her union flag cushion. Thank you for your inspiration and turning our little one into a wow. rider. Oh. That's wonderful. How oh, nice. So one hopes. Uh, 2028. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> exactly. you, you hope, actually, thanks to your efforts too, Laura, that a whole new generation of young people will get on their bikes. Yeah, definitely. It'd be great to see, like, obviously from Beijing, like, I was inspired by these guys. So it'll be great to see, like, the next group of people come through. And one Bradley Wiggins, Bradley Wiggins I think, yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh, were you that in the picture? <laughs> um, 12, I think. <laughs> Can we stop showing Even it? Oh, no. <laughs> That's going to haunt you now. Because, <laughs> really you know, on a serious point here, I know the Talent ID scheme, which obviously identified you, Laura, coming through the ranks. But are there, are there already cyclists that we're identifying from in 2020, 2014. Are we that far ahead in our preparation? Maybe not 20, 2024. You know, certainly for the next four years, um, there's a group of riders in the sprint side, um, there's a group of riders in the, the, the endurance side. You know, every squad has their kind of academy group coming through and they learn the very, you know, the basics about sort of basically, it's like an apprenticeship really. And uh, these guys are there, they're in the waiting in the wings, and some of them are already, you know, in the in the, in the Olympic team, you know, you look at Philip Hines, he was an academy rider until two months ago and now he's an Olympic team and Olympic champion. You're 36 and bowing out. Laura, you're 20. Uh, you've got another four games. I could beat him, eh? Yeah, <laughs> right. Easily. We'll hold you to that. There Laura. you go. Congratulations. You buy me a car if you. If you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks so very much. Thank you. Great to see you both. Well Thank done. Thank you very Thank much. You. Very well Thank done you. again.